Um, I essentially only make like five things. I make rings, bracelets, uh, earrings, money clips, pendants, I guess. I'll say those five for the most part. So, um, and I have a criteria. Metal that won't rust, that's salvaged, reclaimed, recycled. The creative process really, it's materials driven. My name is Devin Johnson, um, artist and owner of makeshift accessories. My original uh, college major was uh, mass communication, photojournalism emphasis. So when I got out of college, um, I played around with some photo jobs for the first year or so. Um, did not find them to be fulfilling. So I went and managed restaurants and did that for um, probably around six or seven years. And, uh, had been playing in that in art, um, specifically in this kind of medium that I'm in now, since around uh, <clears throat> summer of 2008. So it took about two years from the time I started playing with it to the time I went full time with it. So I run the business very much, um, kind of as I would run the, the restaurants that, um, that I worked in. Um, so that I find to be kind of invaluable. And when I got done, I was looking at it, I started kind of like laying out a creature with these uh, big salad forks and things like that. I was like, oh, that sounds kind of fun if I maybe make something like that. So that's actually the first time that I went down um, to my parents' place because I knew they had a workshop that I could play around in and uh, created a uh, silverware creature um, and found it to be very satisfying and exciting and challenging. I pretty much got a no from every art gallery I went to, and they said, well, you know, if you your work looks pretty good, but you're not established, nobody knows who you are out there, so if we put your stuff in here, we want to be putting stuff in that already has a following to some degree. Cut a strip and put a, a copper nail through that was laying there and hammered it off and made a bracelet out of the leather and uh, kind of liked it. Friends encouraged me to go to a boutique that sold jewelry, and she saw stuff. She said, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll take those." And um, from there, I think I did a little teeny uh, green gift fair. It was my first art show I ever did. And I was like, "All right, well, maybe there's something to this." Because at this point, I was doing around 30 art shows a year now, um, and virtually every art show that you do if you're in Minneapolis is south through a couple of things. Northfield was kind of my, my pick. It's because a lot of the contacts and resources that I have are not necessarily open to the public. Um, and so I don't, I like to share some of that to some degree. Because um, some of the yards I go to are not public places. They are closed, um, except to industry and business. Um, and so, by uh, kind of developing relationships and going in there and getting that stuff. You know, but So you just kind of keep that just foot in the door constantly. But you really can spend 100% of your time in any one of the categories that I should say you want to, but you're gonna neglect something else. And uh, um, just kind of, that balance is a real, real tricky one. You could go do a show, um, like for example, I did one in Utah. Um, I did that show, I'd applied a couple times, I'd never gotten in. Uh, I got into the show, went out there, and it was to date, at that time, the very best show I'd ever done. And then uh, reapplied, and then not accepted this year. And there is never a point where you are home free getting into shows, you know? I mean, you get better at understanding what show juries want to see and the types of photos they want to see in booth setups. I never took any jewelry classes at all. At the same point, um, one of the reasons which I think all my work stands out is because I haven't had any formal jewelry training. So the techniques that I was using to make rivets, nobody else has ever seen that technique done before.